you head to certain dollar stores this time of the year, you might encounter these sort of whack-a-pack va valentines. They're self-inflating balloons. If you hit them really hard, they start inflating inside their little pouch and hopefully pop out of the pouch. Uh, they work by a simple reaction between baking soda and citric acid. And here I've cut one of these uh, balloons inside apart and you can see that there's a little pouch of citric acid solution. Our measurements indicate that it holds about, oh, about a little over two grams or about two grams of solution. When we dry that down, we get about 0.4 grams of citric acid and uh, we have a little pile of baking soda in here that contains well we've measured uh, sometimes as much as one and a half uh, grams of baking soda and when the citric acid and the baking soda combine they produce carbon dioxide like in this little balloon which inflates now sometimes these balloons need a little help getting out of their their pouch okay sometimes they pop out by themselves but I can feel this pouch feeling a bit cold probably because the uh, baking soda or the, the balloon feeling a little bit cold probably because the the baking soda is uh, dissolving into the water and that tends to cool the water down but these balloons will eventually inflate to be about a volume of about 150 milliliters. Here's a completely uh, inflated one. Okay, and if we do the measurements on these quantities and do the calculations, we see some interesting things happen here. Um, if we take the 0.4 grams of citric acid in this pouch and we assume that it reacts with all of the baking soda, we find all the baking soda that it can, I should say, we find that we would produce about 150 milliliters of gas, which is consistent with what it takes to inflate these types of balloons. But, and that would sort of indicate that uh, maybe the citric acid is sort of the limiting reactant in this combination of citric acid and baking soda. If we assume the baking soda is the limiting reactant, that is, that's what controls the amount of carbon dioxide gas produced, that we get much, uh, we get significantly bigger volumes of gas. And in fact, if we take this one and a half grams of baking soda in the, from this balloon I dissected, we can see that it can produce a bit more gas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this baking soda into a graduated cylinder. And then instead of adding citric acid, I'm adding an excess of sulfuric acid, which reacts a bit more quickly. And I've added a bit of dish soap, just a drop of dish soap into it, so that if carbon dioxide gas is produced by this reaction, it should be captured in the dish soap and make foam here. So this is about 50 milliliters of sulfuric acid. And if I pour this in here, we can see that we're producing quite a bit of of suds here. Uh, right now we're hitting just about 400 milliliters of, of uh, at the level here. If we subtract out the 50 milliliters of, uh, of hot sulfuric acid, that means we've produced uh, 350 milliliters of, of gas, which again is much bigger than what we see and what's much bigger than what we can achieve by these balloons. So this all points to, uh, leads me to conclude that uh, it's the citric acid that's the limiting reactant inside this reaction between citric acid and baking soda in these self-inflating balloons. Now there are lots of other chemistries involved in self-inflating balloons. Uh, this is not what they use uh, in airbags and those self-inflating balloons. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is not the chemistry they use for, say, the airbags they've used in uh, uh, Mars landers and stuff like that. But uh, this is a really interesting uh, technology and a lot of interesting chemistry we've learned as we've explored this.